Today is Monday, November 30th, the last day of the month, and this is a post-market review for the stock market activities today. We do have important developments from a technical perspective, so we will cover everything, every aspect, all the action for today during the options market analysis, the charts analysis, heat map analysis, so stick around for all of that. And here we go, the Dow Industrial Average closing in the red by 271.73 points or a decline of 0.91%. The Nasdaq barely in the red down 7.11 or 0.06 percent S&P 500 down 16.72 points or 0.46 percent and here is the sector's performance we have a very muted weekday across all sectors however technology closing at number one and capturing the gold medal healthcare at number two capturing the silver at number three consumer defensives but we are not going to give the bronze because the sector managed to close in the red the laggers of the day led by energy consumer cyclicals and financials moving on to the futures market review and here is the action for today we see a modest decline for crude less than one percent or so but we do see weakness across the board specifically for softs coca down cotton down coffee down sugar down big however we see oj muted and lumbar in the green just by a tiny bit the weakness in gold continues however silver managed to close just a tiny bit in the green platinum copper also in the green however palladium is taking a break down a little over two percent meats muted day for live and feeder cattle however the winner of the day lean hogs up over two percent or so the weakness in the futures market today comes from grains remember i have been predicting that we will reach a point where china is going to stop hoarding grains course they did the panic buying before the elections and now we have supply exceeding demand and i've been bearish on grains since post the elections and today was a painful day across the board soybeans down soybean meal oil also down corn wheat oats or declining over two percent or so the outperformers of the day canola and rough rice however also closing in the red Moving on to the big casino, the options market. And the tables today were not as hot as we expected with exception for Apple. The Apple table is making a comeback. Closing at number one with over 2.6 million contracts today. Massive volume. Unbelievable. Oh, about 76% and a half were calls. Massive activity pushing Apple higher. However, there was a little bit of funny activities at the end there. We will cover that during the charts analysis. AMD at number two with about 1 million contracts and about 82% of those were calls. Remember, Neo was the hottest table for the Robin Hood it's to gamble on. That shifted to Palantir and now we're looking for the new table. So my guess is it going to be AMD. Because the third table for today, the busiest one was Tesla. 871,000 contracts, about 63% of those were calls. But the Palantir, new tables, less activity today, very notable. Palantir with a little over 700,000 contracts, about 62 percent of those were calls and you're seeing there is more put activities than calls, not in terms of percentage but in terms of gain versus last week's activities similar story here for neo about 600,000 contracts remember when they were doing over 1 million contracts per day significant downtick of activities here at the neo table only 63 0.6% of those were calls. And here are some interesting trades I found for you today. Right away, you see the AMD pump and dump. Probably gonna finish real quick because somebody's buying the 88 puts expiration date December 4th, meaning that this upcoming Friday. And this is a big one because it is costing over half a million bucks 
for this trade alone. Another notable one here, costing over $1 million for Boeing. They're buying the 250 calls expiration date December 11th. Very interesting. And the bearish bets against small caps continue. The IWN, they're buying the 115 puts expiration date December 18th. Predicting weakness in the IWN and the traders agree with me. We do have Match.com, MTCH. They're not swiping right on this one because they're buying the 120 puts expiration date December 18th. This is also a notable trade costing over half a million bucks. And here's an interesting one for EEM, Emerging Markets ETF. And they are buying the 45 and a half puts expiration date December 24th. And they're committing a little over quarter of a million bucks for this one alone. This is actually a very smart trade after the very impressive run for emerging markets. Perhaps it is time to take a break here and expect a pullback of a little over 6%. Notice that the entry price for this option is very, very cheap. A decline of 3% or so in the short term will probably double or triple your premium. And here is the contrast for the first trade we covered for AMD. This time around, they're betting on the bullish side expecting that the squeeze will continue. It just started today. They're buying the 98 calls expiration date December 18th and they're committing big bucks for this one, almost 2 million bucks with expectation that AMD will gain an additional 6% or so by expiration date. Again, you're seeing the shift from the Robin Hoodiets and the gamblers at the casino from the new table and the Palantir table to AMD. What does that tell you? Gambler, beware about Neo and Palantir. We could be seeing a top and a reversal for those two names while the action continue in the new hot table of AMD. And here is the last interesting trade for the day against the XBI, the Biotech ETF. And again, it is a very smart structure here. They're buying the 125 puts expiration date New Year's Eve. And again, they're committing over 1 million bucks for this one alone. And to reduce that cost, they're selling the 110 puts same expiration date New Year's Eve. And they're collecting about 23 cents for each option sold here interesting trade and if we see the biotech etf declining even by five percent by new year's eve this will be a very rewarding trade remember perhaps this trader wants to place a bet against moderna but it is too risky and instead of placing all your eggs in one basket by shorting moderna why not place a short bet against the entire xbi the biotech ETF, including Moderna. Very smart trade here. You get the best bang for your buck because the premiums for shorting Moderna are very elevated right now. Moving on to the headlines that shape the day. And today is Vaccine Monday. Anybody's excited? Anybody? Anybody? Nobody? That was exactly the market's reaction for this one and this pump has failed even though Moderna is now saying that we have 100% efficacy of the new vaccine. Maybe they should have made it to 99.9% just so it wouldn't sound too fake here. But regardless the market did not buy this one and continued to decline severely in the morning until we had the rescue. What is the news here? President Biden President-elect Biden rolled out the first set of nominations for his economic team on Monday, and he formally selected Janet Yellen for the Treasury Secretary. Old news, Renz Lather repeat. If new vaccine pumps don't work, let's recycle some old news about Janet Yellen, see if that works. And if that doesn't work, let's bring back some old Fed liquidity news. And here it is. Federal Reserve Board announces extension through March 31st, 2021, or several of its lending facilities that were generally scheduled to expire on or around December 31st. Again, we already knew that, old news, but they tried. Did they succeed? It is questionable, but remember, the fourth card to rescue the market and pump it higher is recycling 
the stimulus news to ignite the stimulus optimism. Maybe that would happen tomorrow if the market continues to slide lower. But perhaps what added pressure on the markets early in the morning is the piece of news that we got that the US is expected to add China's top chip maker SMIC, the blacklist of Chinese companies with ties to the military. And we're upping the ante here against China the question is, when will they retaliate? Oh, and by the way, during this uh, Thanksgiving holiday, we have seen the most travelers pass through U.S. airports according to the TSA data. But don't get too excited and go all in buying airline stocks because the numbers are still way, way below the numbers from last year and when we look at the overall recovery in traveling there is no v-shaped recovery here whatsoever we are far far behind last year's numbers and we got a slew of economic data not really we just got a couple today but we do have a slew for the rest of the week massive week for economic data if they come short a little light. Watch out. Here's a little taste for you. The Chicago PMI came at 58.2 while the expectations were 59. And by the way, the last reading was 61.1. Disappointment right there. Here is the next set of data we got for pending home sales. And they fell quote unquote unexpectedly in October. And you see a decline of 1.1% when you compare it to September. This is the data for October and it shows softening even if it is just a little bit in the housing market too. One of the hottest markets in the economy right now. Tomorrow, we'll hear the data about auto sales. So that will be very, very important. And here are some company specific news. Remember the uh, Ponzi scheme called Nikola led by the disgraced former chairman, CEO, and sexual predator Trevor Melton. And now GM is saying, you know what? We're going to forego the deal with Nikola. We don't need them anymore. And you saw the shares of Nikola collapsing over 20% today. And remember, tomorrow, the insiders will be able to sell some more. We said it before, General Motors don't need Nikola at all. This deal was a headache from the very beginning. And CEO Mary Barr could face certain consequences because it resulted in bad publicity for the reputation of General Motors. Now, Mary Barr dumped over 70 million General Motors shares in the last two weeks. So what is going on here? I doubted that GM will reprimand Mary Barra by replacing her because she is a GM girl since she was a toddler. However, it is a stain on her reputation and GM in general. And speaking of uh, overpriced lottery tickets, here we go. Neo is surpassing or has surpassed the valuation of General Motors. And perhaps this is a sign of a market top when you combine this news with a lack of activity or the decreasing level of activity in the Neo table at the Options Casino. You combine that with the technicals, which we will cover during the charts analysis. And you get a picture that Neo is starting to become a stone cold short. Oh, and here's the last bit of news we're covering today. Last week's call options trading activities were absolutely insane. Over 35 million call options were traded before the Thanksgiving holiday, the largest ever. And it shows you that the morons in the market are having a big party and they believe that stocks are only going to go up. We're never going to correct. There are no red days and you go all in, not buying stocks, but you go to the riskiest venue possible by going all in buying call options, hoping for a last minute gamma squeeze before year end so you can satisfy your greedy pig goals of gains but what will happen is when you see this kind of sentiment elevated bullish sentiment usually fires back and you see the opposite of the expectations and personally i don't have any empathy for greedy pigs if you're up 70 percent what 70 percent is not enough for you bro you gotta make it 100 120 all right let's see how that one will work maybe when the market 
corrects and your quote unquote gains go back down to 30, maybe you'll learn that 70% to the upside wasn't that bad at all. Greedy pigs. Oink. And moving on to the heat map analysis. What do we see here? We expected that Apple will perform this week to the upside. It has a bull flag formation from a weekly perspective. It was muted. It was lagging. The big boxes of technology. Today you see what they're doing is dumping the hot names from the last few weeks and they're buying and pumping the laggard names. The picture is very clear. You see the big box of Apple lighting green over 2%. What about Nvidia? Also lagging, consolidating the last few weeks. They're giving Nvidia a bid. Similar story with AMD. It's been going flat since September. It's catching a bid right now. Similar story. When you look at other sectors, healthcare, Pfizer, it's been getting whacked, traded muted the last few weeks. Well, now today it's catching a bit. But if we go back to the tech sector, right away you see that the pain continues in VMware, down another 1% or so. Weakness in Square when you compare it to PayPal, also in the red today. CRM, Salesforce, another red day, but remember, they're going to report earnings tomorrow. Uber is also a notable underperformer in the tech sector today. What's going on in the communication services sector? We see the big boxes of Google and Facebook trading to the downside. Some gains here for Zoom, a little over 1%. However, the stock is trading down after hours due to the earnings report. Different story and a contrast between Spotify versus Snapchat. Spotify reported some good news, trading in the green. Snapchat, we saw the notable options activities and buying puts against Snap yesterday and also today. And it is no wonder Snap is rolling to the downside. Disney, Netflix, both muted. What's going on with consumer cyclicals? Amazon down about 1%, but we do see a lot of pain for Alibaba and the Chinese names due to the news that were reported in the morning about blacklisting Chinese companies. The question here is, how long would it take before the US government list Alibaba as having ties to the Chinese military and ban trading Alibaba in the US market? That is the risk that you're going to carry by buying this name. I like it. I like the earnings report, but the risk is not worth it. You have two governments hitting this name very hard. The Chinese government and potentially the U.S. government. All the reopening names, whether they're cruises, hotels, casinos, closing in the red. Lots of the apparel plays also in the red. But the pain is very apparent in auto manufacturers. We're going to get the data tomorrow. Toyota down. Honda down. GM down, Tesla down, NIO down over 6%. Now remember, Tesla's down 3%, but it is up 4% or so after hours because the morons bought the news about the news about about the news that Tesla is going to be included in the S&P 500. How many times are you going to milk the same piece of news? Moving on. To consumer defensives, modest gains here for Walmart and Costco. Kroger is the outperformer of the day. The underperformer, Coca-Cola and beer names. These are the going out beer names. We're talking about Budweiser, a Biv, but another green day for Sam. Samuel Adams. Budweiser trades in opposite directions with Sam. Very interesting dynamic here within the beer names. Real estate, more pain for Simon Properties since we shorted the name. Mortgage reads down, healthcare reads down, but we do see a rebound here for public storage. PSA, what's going on with the utilities? Pain across the board, Next Era Energy. Duke Energy, all down over 2%. Dominion tried to rally today, but it closed also slightly in the red. Notable weakness here for utilities. What's going on with basic materials? It's been one of the hottest sectors recently. Not so hot so today. Copper down, steel down, iron, nickel, all down, chemicals down. But we do see a rebound in gold miners. Barrick Gold closing over 1% or so. I'm expecting a rebound in gold this week. Energy, the laggard of the day, but the winner the last few weeks. Exxon, Chevron, down significantly. BP, Philips, 
Kinder Morgan, Halliburton, all closing in the red significantly. We have a trade against Oxy, Occidental Petroleum. We'll talk about it during the charts analysis. What's going on with industrials? Weakness across the board. Defense names down significantly. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon, Northrop, all down over 1%. Matter of fact, over 2.5% for Boeing, Lockheed, and Raytheon. Airlines down across the board. The data we got for the Thanksgiving traveling is not encouraging whatsoever. All the industrials, the giant ones, General Electric, 3M, Honeywell, all trading in the red. Caterpillar, almost 1% to the downside. And we do have that the CEO of Caterpillar made a massive dump last week unloading tens of millions worth of caterpillar shares ups is the exception here closing a little over one percent or so what's going on with healthcare another massive day of double digits gains for moderna and the question is when will the stock reverse and trade lower it could happen very soon as soon as tomorrow so keep an eye on Moderna. Down day for Eli Lilly, Amgen, Preston Myers, but we see Pfizer, we talked about Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca closing in the green today. The notable gainer are the diagnostic names such as Thermo Fisher. However, the laggard is Walgreens Pharmacies. What about financials? Massive red day here. Big banks down big, but the weakness is notable in regional banks. And remember, I have a put options trade against regional banks, the KRE. And today we saw the KRE down over 3%. So if you followed me on that particular trade, today was a good day. I said, give me a hell yeah. We see weakness here with Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. I'm waiting for Morgan Stanley to drop like a rock so I can buy it again. Weakness for MasterCard, American Express, all the credit card services, exception PayPal. PayPal should not be in this section. It should be within technology. PayPal trades in a world of its own. Another green day. What about the rotation trade? It is mixed. However, we can say that the stay-at-home stocks... The momentum stocks managed to outperform. Notably, of course, from Peloton over 6% today and Shopify over 5%. Apple is the notable gainer among the big tech names. Across the aisle, the notable gainer here is Planet Fitness, up almost 1% or so. The notable decliners, Chevron, down over 4%, Six Flags, over 5%, weakness in Coca-Cola, General Motors, Live Nation, Budweiser, Royal Caribbean, all down more than 2% or so. And the big question here, where will the money flow this week? Are we shifting back to momentum? Most of the names are already overcrowded. They pump Apple today. Apple is up over 2%. Now what? What do we do for here? Where does the money go? Or does the money come out of the market? And we see an ATM treatment for both sectors of the rotation trade. Moving on to the charts analysis, starting with the 15 minutes chart of the SPY. What happened today? A gap lower, the mysterious entity overslipped, they forgot to pump the market higher, we saw a gap lower and a flush down. It was very significant in the beginning of the day. However, we got rescued and we caught support from where? The level of 359 we identified as support. The low of the candle actually came about 359.18. So it missed it by 18 cents. And this is why we say it is a level. It is a range. Because certain traders will program their buy orders a little above the support line so they can get into the trade ahead of everyone. We have the fear of missing out that the name or any chart for that matter will rebound before it hits the target. So they place their orders a little higher. But in the grand scheme of things, what do we see here? We see a formation of the bear flag, which will generally proceed to the downside. Now, what do we see from a daily perspective? Different story. The daily chart is still bullish. We bounce significantly from a level of support and we closed at the highs of the day. And this is why it is important to look at the big chart, but also look under the hood for the 15 minutes perspective. What's going on in the queues? 15 minutes perspective. A big flush down in the morning, catching support from the level of 295.35. And what do you know? The chart never looked back. It was straight buying all the way till the end of the day. 
recapturing the support level of 299. You cannot look at this chart and say it is bearish behavior from the queues. If anything, it is very bullish. What's going on from a daily perspective? Here's what's going on. Declining early in the morning, catching support, closing at the highs of the day, second to all times highs nothing bearish here the chart remains bullish what about the dixie we've been talking about the last act quote unquote for the dixie is it going to start today because we saw a flush down in the dollar index in the morning however we got bought and closed at the highs of the day making a reversal of candle to the upside will it be followed by another run tomorrow that would be the confirmation that we are heading to the last act scenario what is going on with gold another red day however muted all in all and we are expecting and looking for a reversal to the upside for gold from this point on could it happen hand in hand with an increase in the us dollar yes it could however it depends on how yields would trade and for that let's visit the tnx the 10 years treasury yield another red day failing to gather momentum we see buying of bonds the tlt is up today and yields going lower and it is starting to look here that we're gonna see a flush down in yields we made a lower low and all the bets that were placed ahead of time the yields will reach one percent before the end of the year if they are taking off the table you will see a flush down in yields and i have a hunch that this is what's going to happen which means that gold can rally in that scenario what's going on with the vix today we saw the vix gap in higher over seven percent in the morning however reversing and closing in the red significantly massive show of weakness here from the vix and again is this a sign and a confirmation that the market is going to rally impulsively from this point on the traditional way to look at it is yes and certainly your favorite analyst tom lee from neptune says that today's reversal of the vix is a confirmation that the market is going to rally but there's another way to read the tape here that it is a sign of complacency remember the data that i just presented to you that we have seen the largest call options buy ratio ever last week signaling that market participants are arrogant and they're very greedy and they don't think that they need to buy any protection whatsoever protection who needs that you get the std moderna will come up with a vaccine don't worry about it now the question how would you know looking at the chart right now whether this is a confirmation of an upcoming market rally or a warning signal of complacency and that we will see a massive pop in the vix coming up the answer is you don't there's nothing here that tells you one way or the other. The evidence on the surface says, yes, we're going to have an upcoming massive market rally and a collapse in the VIX. But if you read certain details and you do more research, you could come with the conclusion that it is a sign of complacency. Me, I wait till I get a signal of confirmation. Waiting for the VIX to pop over 24 Point eight. waiting for the TLT to start trading above 60 again waiting for Apple to get rejected once again from the 120 level in a harsh rejection manner then I'll know right away and perhaps before the market moves whether this is hitting one way or the other oh and by the way here's a tweet I released back last week and I said this is the CB oe put to call ratio and they usually start becoming bearish and shopping for puts when it reached about 65 percent because when the put to call ratio reaches 65 percent the puts are very cheap and the likelihood is that once you reach 65 percent you see a correction in the market and a rush to buy puts last minute for market participants thus elevating the value of puts that you own that you got ahead of time ahead of the herd what do we see where is a cboe put to call ratio right now well it did reach as you can see the 65 level 65 percent and it bounced higher meaning that we are just starting to see an appetite to buy protection is this a clue for where the vix is going you could argue this way but it's still at the lower 
range. If you see another round of put options buying tomorrow, that could be a clue in a canary in the coal mine. Moving on to a chart of Apple. Remember we said that we expect Apple to outperform because it has a bull flag formation from a weekly perspective and it was ignored last week the last few weeks matter of fact today they're flowing the money back to apple apple gapping higher catching support not once but twice from the 17 support line gaining plenty of confidence to rock it higher with enough energy to crack the very important resistance line of 120 but however Something funny happened last minute in today's trading session and we saw Apple flushing down significantly, closing below the important level of 120. Is that an ominous sign? Could be, could be, but it is too early. We have to see how Apple trades tomorrow. If it flushes down, boy, this is about the third or fourth rejection from the 120 level, meaning that it would be a harsh rejection, the one we are looking for as one of the three conditions for the overall market correction the upcoming overall market correction what do we see here for tesla technically today was a reversal candle but remember the sheepies and the culties they have no intelligence whatsoever the program on autopilot buying of the stock via options via fractional shares via pair of socks it doesn't matter and after hours they're pumping the name because breaking news tesla is officially included in the s p 500 wasn't that the reason the stock got pumped to begin with they're recycling the same news over and over again but we did see significant weakness from Tesla today and remember what Buffett said the likelihood is when a stock is added to the S&P 500 while the stock is hot you see the particular stock actually trading lower aka sell the news after the inclusion we will see if that happens or not with Tesla stock and here is a chart we were watching throughout last week but we talked about it yesterday GameStop and we were watching the level of 17 as resistance and a potential entry point for a short trade. What happened today? The name opened gaping higher above the 17 level, trading all the way up to 20, however, experiencing a very harsh, strong reversal and closing below the level of 17. Strong reversal. There is no ifs, there is no buts, there is no anything about it. It is a reversal and it is a signal or an entry for a short position. However, if you're going to enter this one, heed this warning. Give yourself a little more time than you think because remember what happened with Bitcoin, the flash crash during Black Friday. What happened? They picked it up. The formal crowd waiting in the sidelines stampeded and bought Bitcoin recovering pretty much the majority of the declines from black friday the crowd waiting on the sidelines saw the decline in bitcoin as a black friday sale to buy bitcoin this is the current mentality in the market overall dips are worthy of buying meaning that this reversal in gamestop will be viewed by some morons as an opportunity to buy and enter the trade are they gonna be right most likely not because the research is out there and after the Robin Hood it's pump, names usually decline a month or so later. So it is a shorting opportunity. But be aware that the momentum is not dead completely yet. Another one, and a similar story here for Neo, bigger than GM. That is a headline indicating a market top. Weakness in the options market activity when you compare it to the last few weeks. The technicals starting to look a little weaker here see the turning to the downside in the RSI making another lower low failing to challenge the all times highs you see this as a potential for entry however it is a similar story with GameStop if the name declines say to 45 some formal crowd waiting on the sidelines will see it as an opportunity to buy again whether they're going to be right or wrong that depends on how significant and forceful the selling pressure but it is worthy of taking the shot right now and placing some put options against new you shouldn't go all in and you should give yourself a little more time than you think 
And by the way, what's going on with the trades we have opened? We reviewed all of these trades yesterday. However, a viewer reminded me, and I was telling you yesterday, that I have the hunch, I have the feeling that I'm missing a trade here. And the viewer reminded me that it is for Alcoa. And here is the slide from a few days ago for the unusual options activities for that particular day. And we see the ticker double A. They were buying the 18 and a half puts expiration date December 18th. And I told you that when I saw this trade, I followed it and I entered the trade buying the 18 and a half puts expiration date December 18th because it was a very, very unusual trade. And here is what happened with the chart of Alcoa. The entry point for the trade for me was the resistance level of 21 and the exit point at 17 and a half. Now, I bought the 18 and a half puts when it reached the resistance level of 21 and failed multiple times from breaking above it. We see the RSI is overbought, curling downward. So is the MACD, the stock closing at 19.90 today. There is still room to enter the trade if you are interested in it but again if we see significant flush in the next few days and the name declining all the way to perhaps 19 18 and a half i will be closing this trade taking profits i'm not gonna let it ride all the way to expiration but make no mistake the chart is looking very very weak right now and here is a new trade i entered today for accidental petroleum the ticker OXY. This name has been on a tear up over 80% since the beginning of the month. We have an OPEC meeting tomorrow that is very significant and they will debate whether they should increase the output or not. Any bad news from that meeting will hurt the entire energy sector and you will see plenty of profit taking from petroleum and gas names. Oxy is the biggest ATM to take profits from. So here is what I did opening a calendar put trade for OXY. And I am buying the 15 puts expiration date December 18th. And I am selling the 15 bucks puts expiring this week. All in all, reducing my entry price to 40 cents a piece. Now, the ideal scenario here is for Oxy to decline, but not close below 15. And next week, the declines continue and I will sell another put. Maybe it is going to be the 15 puts, making it another calendar put, or it could be a lower price put, making the next round as a calendar debit spread hybrid. So here it is. These are all the open trades that I have for now. I do not intend in opening more trades in the next few days, but I will manage these trades if I see massive gains in certain trades. Remember the first rule, of options trading always be closing don't be too greedy here specifically if you have a shorter expiration date and moving on to conclude this video today we received some economic data from the chicago pmi and the pending home sales showing a trend toward weakness tomorrow we do have the manufacturing pmi and ism index if these come up short and we see auto sales weakening as well the alarm signals are going to start to hit in the market because we have significant weakness showing up here remember we have the big jobs report coming up on friday all of these indicators the ism manufacturing index the Chicago PMI and motor vehicle sales, all of these are indicators to what we are going to receive on Friday for the big jobs report. And if it is a disappointment and a significant curl to the downside and a trend lower, it will rattle the market, no ifs or buts about it. Because the whole narrative of the V-shaped recovery will be killed once and for all. Now I know what you're going to say. Tomorrow the Fed is speaking. And even if we have a bad jobs report, the Fed will rescue us. You are generally right, but the Fed would rather have the federal government rescue you instead via a new round of stimulus. And we know that there is a lot of uncertainty and delays for any stimulus to arrive to the economy anytime soon. And also keep in mind that the majority of market participants right now from the retail side are options gamblers. You're talking as you are a stock investor saying that yes, we could see a correction and then the Fed is going to rescue us. Remember, you're gambling on options, son. And if we do see a correction due to the bad jobs report, 
or whatever it is, your options, call options, I assume, will expire worthless. And then the Fed will rescue you, the market after the fact and after you lost your money. So don't put yourself in this position. Lastly, what am I watching right after the opening bell tomorrow? Number one, I'm watching Apple. I want to see what the funny business is in the last hour today, whether this is significant or not. I'm also watching the VIX very closely. And the last thing I'm watching is treasury yields. I'm anticipating the flush lower in treasury yields. Could be right, could be wrong, but this is what I'm watching or tomorrow. Let me know in the comments, what are you watching for right after the opening bell tomorrow? If you found the information presented in this video helpful, please subscribe, press the like button, the notification button, and follow me on social media.